Tom Brown School Days by Thomas Hughes Book Review. So this is a Victorian era book. It was published in 1857. I believe in America this book is almost completely unknown nowadays, or at least I myself as an American, I never heard about it when I was growing up. Uh, although that could be just me. Um, you know, maybe I was just hanging out with the wrong crowd or, you know, maybe it was just my particular English school teachers never made a big deal about it. So uh, if you're an American watching this video, uh, let me know if you're familiar with this book and when and how you became familiar with this book. A actually, no matter where you're from, let me know whether or not you're familiar with this book. I'd, I'd be curious to find out which countries it's famous in and which countries it's not. I get the impression that it's still relatively well known in, in England. Uh, according to Wikipedia, as recently as 2005, they made a TV movie out of this book. Um, I, I think, I, I don't think it's famous at all in America. Uh, certainly that was my experience. Anyways, uh, there was a character from this book, Harry Flashman, who was later spun off into the Flashman series by another writer starting in 1969, and I had a British friend recommend to me the Flashman series. So after he recommended the series to me, I got on Wikipedia and I found out that the Flashman series uh, is a takeoff or the Flashman character originates from this old 1857 book. So I thought, well, okay, if I'm going to get into this series, I might as well start with the original source material. Uh, I was living in Melbourne at the time and I could not find this book in the bookstores at all. I found an old copy in the library that hadn't been checked out in years, I think. I mean, it was like a really old copy from, you know, like uh, the 1950s or something like that. Um, so apparently in Melbourne, Australia, a lot of people aren't reading this book either. Um, I got about 50 pages into it and I started to get a little bit impatient with the slow pace of it. And I was really only reading it because I wanted to get into the Flashman series. Uh, so after I got about 50 pages into this book, then I, I thought to myself, okay, I, you know, I, I'm slogging through this book. I want to have a little bit of a treat while I'm reading this boring uh, old Victorian book. So I started reading this concurrently with the Flashman series. Uh, and the Flashman series were so interesting that I read them much faster. In fact, I finished three Flashman books in the time it took me to read Tom Brown's School Days. But I'm, I'm glad I read Tom Brown's School Days uh, because the Flashman books make so many references back the Tom Brown school days. So you, you really do need to read this book in order to appreciate the Flashman books. Um, but enough about Flashman. Let, let's talk about this book on its own terms. Tom Brown school days isn't a terrible book, but it's a book from a different time with a different sort of pacing and a different sort of prose style. I'm sure you've noticed, as I do, that whenever I read a Victorian era book, some of these classics have aged better than others. Some of them read like they could have been written yesterday. And some of them are written with a more antiquated style. This book is one of the latter. Uh, it's, it's written with a more antiquated style. Uh, still, if you're willing to put in the effort of engaging the book, there's a lot to be gained from it. As with any old book, the main value is in being able to get a glimpse of what, would, of what life was like before you were born. So what was life like for schoolboys in 1850s? Or actually this book was published in 1850s, but set in the 1830s. So what, what was school life school life like back then. You know, what did schoolboys actually do before television, before video games, before the internet? How did they entertain themselves? What kind of mischief did they get up to? What kind of values were they taught at the boarding schools? 
Uh, and what was a boarding school like in 19th century England? Now, this is a work of fiction, so you always have to be careful with any work of fiction, but there's reason to think that this is probably largely true to life. Uh, the book is based on the same school that the author Thomas Hughes himself went to as a boy. Uh, it takes place around the same time that Thomas Hughes himself was a student there. Uh, and real life figures like Dr. Thomas Arnold, the headmaster of the school at the time, are incorporated into the story. And although Tom Brown and his friends are fictional characters, many of the incidents in this book, I suspect, are based off of Thomas Hughes's own school days. Much of the book has a realistic feel to it, and the details the kind of mischief that is easy to imagine real boys getting into. And it's just a reminder that boys getting into mischief is as old as time. I mean, sometimes we think that our generation or each generation thinks that they were the first ones to rebel or to get into mischief. But here, all the way back in 1857, you have stories about young boys getting into mischief and causing trouble. The book is written with a heavy, heavy moralizing tone, but it's not exactly the the strict school marn morals of never speak unless spoken to and stay out of trouble type morality. It's more of the British bulldog old-fashioned morals of the schoolyard. Never pick on boys smaller than you, but don't be afraid to stand up to bullies even if they are bigger than you. Never shirk from a fight if challenged, Always throw yourself fully into sports without worrying about getting injured. A certain amount of mischief is natural for a young boy, but never lie or be, dis uh, lie or be dishonest about it when caught, etc. Now, Harry Flashman, I mentioned him, um, of course, he's the character who would later be taken by a different author into the Flashman series. Harry Flashman is the villain of this book and represents the antithesis of everything our young heroes stand for. He mercilessly bullies younger boys when he thinks he can get away with it, but toadies to all the older boys. He takes great pleasure in inflicting pain on others, but shirks away from a fight as soon as someone stands up to him. Although Flashman is only in a portion of this book, uh, he doesn't make much of an appearance until the book is a quarter finished, and he gets, out, he gets kicked out of rugby school before the book is halfway through, uh, and then that's the end of his character. Uh, his character and the younger boy's struggle against him dominate the part of the book that he is in. One can certainly see in this short section all the bad qualities which George MacDonald Frazier would later, later make a whole series out of. It was a stroke of comic genius for Frazier to take the character of Flashman and decide to explore what kind of man he would turn out to be. But again, enough about Flashman. Uh, back to this book. Uh, parts of the book where it's conveying morality, uh, or when it's conveying the message, uh, are a bit preachy, maybe a bit tiresome for the modern reader, but it was readable as far as it went, and it made sense within the context of the book. The problem is when the characters get religion. Now, I'm not religious myself. I left the church several years ago and became an agnostic, but I don't have a problem with reading about religion in a novel per se, if it's done well. Uh, for example, if the religious changes that the characters undergo feels natural and feels like what these characters would really do. In this book, though, uh, the religious change feels very forced. Uh, it does not feel at all natural to the story. Uh, near the end, there were some passages where these schoolboys are sitting around discussing the Bible, 
and it felt so unnatural. I just, I couldn't believe that these were the same characters uh, I had been reading about in the beginning of the book. Uh, I, I, I felt it was really terribly written, to be honest. And apparently I'm not the only one. Uh, P.J. Woodhouse, a famous uh, English uh, humorist, has written a satirical essay all about the sudden change of tone. Uh, the essay is called The Tom Brown Question. Uh, I'll link to the essay down below uh, so you can read the essay yourself. Um, but to summarize the essay, uh, he suggests that the first half of Tom Brown's school days was written by Thomas Hughes, and then Thomas Hughes got high, uh, kidnapped by a moralizing committee. And the moralizing committee wrote the second half of Tom Brown's school days. After reading this book myself, I can completely understand where P.J. Woodhouse is coming from. It, it, it does feel like that's what happened. I mean, that's not what happened. That's just P.J. Woodhouse being satirical. But it feels like that's what happened to this book. Um, final verdict, well, it's a classic. Uh, so, you know, if you're like me, if you're, t if you're the type of person who reads classic books just to say that you've read them, then go ahead, check this book out, read through it. it it's it's slow-paced, but there are interesting elements to it. It, it. it is, if you can get over the fact that it's slow-paced, it is an interesting window into what life was like for British schoolboys 150 years ago. And then once you're finished with this book, you can move on to the Flashman series. But more about that later.